Okay. Um, some more kind of those were Hanoverian um, British here and a line of British here as well. So the centre is British with some Hanoverians, um, King's German Legion. We've got the Dutch and Hanoverians to the right with the light uh, cavalry supporting them in that direction, holding that flank. We've got British in reserve. We've got Brunswickers well in reserve. We've got some um, King's German Legion and British in reserve. Some dotted here. And then we have more Dutch units there far on the left flank. Um, interestingly, we don't have a whole bunch of skirmishers further back. I thought there were more. I might have missed some skirmishers out, so there might be some more to go in there. And uh, then I'm going to put on the leaders who are deployed on board at start, which tells us which units are already committed. Yes, I had left some skirmishers off. So um, we get some British in the sandpit place, aren't there? We get the King's German Legion in the building, in the court garden, and in the... Is it, Surrounded by a wall, and my battery's about to run out, and um, we get the British here in Ouvrement itself, behind the garden wall, in the gardens here. Um, Hanoverian Dutch. So those little cubes indicate the commanders are on board with committed units. So there's seven um, brigades committed um, on the Allied side. We have commanders here. They have a command range of two. So essentially he's got his brigade here, his brigade there with attached artillery brigade here. So that one's part of this brigade. Um, then you've got the uh, King's German Legion committed there and the... Uh, the division first brigade there. You've got Wellington here. Now he's got a range of eight, so he could commit all of these and up to over all of these at any point. Um, so you've got Kemp there, his reserve brigade there from the fifth division's committed. You've got the Prince of Orange here. He's ready to commit that if necessary. Now these are committed, there's their leader, he's got a command problem, he's got a range of two. So he can command this unit and that unit, but these ones are out of command. It might be necessary for the Prince of Orange to move over if there's problems occurring, according to that disposition there. And we have over here, who was that? That was Uxbridge, yes. So he's ready um, to commit these cavalry units, which are not yet committed. The green ones indicate committed brigades. Uh, so that is the Allied dispositions at start, and now I'll set up the initial French division, the uh, Corps, in fact, I believe. So we see here the French First Corps at start units. Um, we have oops, Corps artillery there, and I've lost. Where is he? The Erlon's core. So we have the Erlon. And uh, compared to the Anglo Allies, it's, they're very uniform and um, organised in their units. So we have um, four divisions and a cavalry division of the first corps. And each division is organised into two brigades of four regiments each. Cavalry into two, I don't know what the proper specifications designations were but it's two brigades shall we say of two regiments each again um, each of those regiments is 300 horses and 500 men and the morale is high and they have what um, and five artillery pieces each division as well. Um, so who, who do we have? We have Alex, the first division. 
Donzelet, Marconiat, and Durette, and Jacquinot is leading the cavalry um, of the first corps. Then we also have um, these cavalry divisions. So we have Delot, Guelphier, Dumont, and Subervier, each leading again a division of cavalry in support of these units that are going to set up within four hexes of the church in Plan Sinal there. So um, here is the first corps set up, and I think it was four uh, cavalry divisions, wasn't it? So you have two cavalry divisions on the flank. Um, there's another one which is another two winding through here, so they're going to move up ahead on the road. Um, this one will cover their flank from any movements from the cavalry over there. Then you've got artillery on the roads in the main, uh, infantry here and, and all around here so the artillery will try and make use of the roads um, following on from the cavalry in that direction the infantry moving over land so that the idea is that the first corps will take up position here to um, pin uh, the troops here and um, we'll start to press an attack once the rest of the um, Attacking force has made its way around here. Then um, Napoleon, Ney, and all the rest of his corps commanders are there. Um, what he has left is the second corps, um, the sixth corps, and the eleventh cavalry division, and then the imperial guard. So um, the idea is that the second and sixth corps will make their way up around here for the flanking attack. These will, will be here, and they will press the attack together as they can. The uh, Imperial Guards will come up, and depending on what's happening, they will either move up here or here, and uh, they will essentially be the reserve to press home the attack, or um, if necessary, once the others have gone in. Now what that does leave is that, um, seeing this unit is that's this cause destined press an attack there, it does leave this flank wide open. So um, the Imperial Guard might have to be a flank defence. Um, but the hope is, is that as, as we press here, that these units will be called to help with the defence there. They're not really strong enough, we hope, to mount an attack on their own. So that's the general plan. That is the setup. We start all the way at the beginning of the turn track at 6... No, it's 9.15. And we end at uh, 9.30, so it's uh, nearly 12 hours of combat ahead of us. And four turns an hour gives us a lot of scope. Now, um, we will get double movement as long as we're, I think it's out of nine hexes, maybe 12, I can't remember, of an enemy unit. They will get double movement, so they're going to move quite sharply up to positions. And uh, we're going to have to activate... Um, the rest to bring them on quite sharpish too. Um, because uh, Napoleon will have to activate his units, they're not already on map quite early. Um, he starts with a essentially the maximum 399 morale points. So his units will start becoming tired as soon as they come on and they've got a long way to go. We'll see how it pans out. And uh, just for the record, that setup took an hour, almost exactly an hour, including my warbling on the phone camera. No, 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 I said uh, one hour. Two hours. Two hours it took. Two hours.